Welcome back to the MMA Fight Realm. UFC Vegas 85 next week. I'm giving you guys my picks and predictions. I also got my early dog bed alert for UFC 298. And Dana White going off on UFC 297. Check the content out, guys. We got no fights this weekend. Anyways, back to it. My picks and predictions. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Check out my Instagram at MMA Fight Realm. I got fight news, betting odds, a bunch of UFC content. Just made that page. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, guys. Let's get to it. Leading off the card. Thomas Peterson taking on Jamal Pogues. Jamal Pogues has a very low output for the heavyweight weight class, and he lacks the power, guys. He has no knockout finishes on the regional scene, no knockout finishes in the UFC. He prefers fights to go to the ground, and just like his opponent, Thomas Peterson. Thomas Peterson is a lot more ruthless when he's on the ground, though. I do see that Thomas Peterson has a bunch of ground and pound finishes in the LFA. And watching the tape, like I said, a lot more ruthless. His only loss came to Waldo Cortez Acosta. And if you watch the fight, he was winning those early rounds. If the fight would have went to the judges, I do think that Thomas Peterson would have got the edge there. But Waldo was able to find something in that third round. And like I said, he's got that power. Pogues doesn't. I do see Peterson not getting intimidated by Pogues' punches and sticking to the game plan, which is to grapple. And I think he shaped up his cardio, which was the issue in that Waldo fight. So give me Peterson to win this one by sub or by decision, guys. Moving on. Landon Quinones taking on Markel Medeiros. Highly touted prospect Markel Medeiros making his debut, coming off a finish in Dana White Contender Series. Landon Quinones, short notice fight that he took against Nazrat Hakparas, where he showed some talents, but I just think he's a grappler first, striker second. Markel Medeiros, striker first, grappler second. And it's going to show in this fight. Markel Maderos against his opponents, he is hurting them, guys. And they do not want to stand with him. He's got the hands coming out of Factory X. Great gym. I do see him winning this fight, guys. I see him landing something clean on Landon Quinones, despite him showing a great fight against Nazra in short notice. I just do think that, like I said, Markel is going to be a step ahead on the feet. And he's going to land something clean. Give me Markel to win this one by decision or by KO. Moving on, guys. We got Julia Storialenko taking on Luana Carolina. Luana Carolina, tricky opponent here because she's got the height and reach against Lupi Godinez. And she showed it. She was able to defend all the takedowns and keep the fight standing. And when she keeps the fight standing, she's a Muay Thai artist. So she's no stranger to that. I do think that she will have the advantage on the feet against Julia Storialenko as well. And Juli Julia, ju judo specialist, guys. So Luana Carolina has been taken down in her past two fights. Julia's got all the tools to get the takedown. And Luana's not going to have as much as a height and reach advantage here against Storialenko. So... Give me a story, Elenco, to win this one. I do think she is going to get the takedowns and the control time to even win this one by decision. But she's got a great grappling game. She could even win this one by submission, guys. Moving on. We got Blake Bilder taking on Jung Young Lee. Another tough, tough fight to pick here. I think that it's really going to come down to um, we got a lot of questions here guys and it's really going to come down to what can what can these fighters show us next saturday night blake bowder his only win came to shane young and he's got a win in the contender series he hasn't looked like how he looked in the contender series in the ufc and that win against shane young not really ufc talent jung young lee 
in the finals of the Road to UFC. He fought against Yi Za, and Yi Za was able to get a bunch of takedowns on Jung Young Lee. I do think he lost the fight. I think Jung, I think Yi Za won that fight. Um, the judges had it wrong on that night, and Lee definitely went home and worked on his takedown defense. I'm sure. But Blake Bowder's got a lot of tools, man. He's a boxer. He's got a black belt in BJJ. So he's crafty, man. He can mix it up. I know he's a dog in this one, but I'm going to go with Blake Bowder to win this fight. I got to go with the guy who has more tools to get it done. I do think it's not going to be fair if this fight plays out on the ground and Lee Lee's cardio starts giving out. Um, Lee's best chance at winning this fight is by KO. I do think he is hoping he lands something hard on Bilder. And Bilder's got great boxing defense. He's got a lot of experience. Give me Bilder to win this one by decision, guys. And if it goes on the ground, he could win by submission. Moving on, <clears throat> Demba Garimbo taking on Pete Rodriguez. Now, this is clearly a grappler versus striker, striker here. Garimbo is going to have the advantage on the ground. Rodriguez is going to have the advantage on the feet. But Rodriguez has not beaten anybody with true talent, guys. He's got a win over Mike Davis, who was Mike Jackson, who was one and one in the UFC. And he's got a, another win over a guy who was six and six, two and six. So Pete really still has to show me more in terms of me being able to Trust him for a solid pick in my videos, guys. So I'm going to have to go with Demba here. I do think his height and reach is going to play a very big role into his game plan, which is to get the fight to the ground. And when he does get the fight to the ground in this fight, it's his world, man. I do see him having the chance to win this one by submission, tiring Pete out. And yeah, man, give me Demba Garimbo to win this one even by decision or by submission, guys. Moving on. Another tough fight here. Charles Johnson taking on Azat Maksum. Short notice for Charles Johnson. I don't know why he keeps taking these short notice fights. He's kind of like the Walmart version of Max Holloway. And that's... I don't say that to disrespect him. Because I do think that if you give him five rounds, he could win a good portion of his fights. But he's only got three. And when he's only in these three-round fights, he tends to drop the first two and then pick it up in the third. And against wrestlers who just take him down and work up that control time, judges have to go off what they see. So Azad Maksum, a freestyle wrestler coming out of Kazakhstan, 17-0. and 0. He's got sub finishes. He's got knockout finishes. Another guy with more tools to get it done here. And I got to go with Azad Maksum. I know he didn't look too good against Tyson Nam in his debut. I feel like he dropped the ball in that one. I'm just going to say it was maybe debut jitters, but he did still win. So, like I said, he knows how to get the job done. I think he's got the grit and I think he's got the stand up. And definitely the grappling advantage here if the fight plays out Uh on the mats, guys. So give me Azad Maksum to win this one by decision. Moving on, guys. We got Molly McCann taking on Diana Belbita. This is a rematch here, guys. I don't know why they're rematching. I guess they're just maybe rebooking this one because that weight class is looking for more competition at the moment. But, um, yeah, Diana and Molly were not able to get it done in their last ones. And they have not really improved much since they fighting each other back in 2019. I know that was Belle Beta's debut, but she still really fights the same. Um, Molly, she loses majority of her fights by her own wrongdoings. She makes a lot of mistakes in her fights and against in her last fight against Storia Lenko. She literally put herself in that arm bar. And I'm going to count on Molly McCann to get a takedown here. 
when she, whenever she wants it. And I do think she has the more power on the feet, but she's wild, man. It's 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 crazy to count on her to land on something on the feet at this point in her career. She's definitely got the better chance at winning this one just by control time and getting the fight to the ground. And that's what I'm going to count on on this one. So low confidence pick is going to be Molly McCann to win this one by decision, guys. Moving on, we got Gilbert Urbina taking on Charles Radke. Gilbert Urbina fought Sean Brady in the regional scene, guys, and he took him to decision. I don't think Charles Radke can go one round against Sean Brady, guys. Not even in the regional scene, and definitely not now. Charles Radke, it was a tough one against Blood Diamond in his last fight. He could barely get him down, and that's what he's known for. And Blood Diamond, coming out of city kickboxing, they don't train a lot of wrestling, guys. They do train the takedown defense, however. So, I don't know how to make of Charles Radke's debut. It was not a good one. I think he just barely won that fight. And Gilbert Urbina walks through Blood Diamond. He looked good in his last fight. I think he's just getting better through uh, with time. He's young. I'm going to go with Gilbert Urbina to win this one. I do think he's got the uh, grappling to contend with a guy like Charles Radke. And Charles Radke is going to hope that he could get the takedown in this fight because if it plays out on the feet, Gilbert Urbina's life for a knockout here. All right, guys, moving on. We got Aliashkab Kizriev taking on Mahmoud Muradov, guys. Long layoff here for Kizriev. Two years or almost two years, something like that. But he's only 33 years old, so that's not so much of an impact for me uh, making a pick on this fight. And Muradov, his only win, most recent win, is Brian Barberina at middleweight. And I don't like that. Brian Barberina is not really a true middleweight. He's really a welterweight. So I just think that, of course, you're going to outclass the guy. I mean, you got 17 knockouts on your record. You're definitely the better striker against Brian Barberina in the upper weight class. So, didn't really impress me in that one. Kizriev does look like the better grappler in this fight. I do think that Kizriev's game plan is going to be to get the fight to the ground and work a submission. He is the Russian-style grappler, guys. So, I know we haven't seen him in two years, but I'm going to have to go with Kizriev here. I, like I said, the advantage is clear, and... I do think that's where the fight is going to play out on the mats. Give me Kizriev to win this one by submission or decision, guys. Moving up the card, we got Natalia Silva taking on Viviani Araujo. Natalia Silva, guys, is phenomenal in her fights in the UFC, guys. Looking real good. And what strikes me here is the 10-year age difference amongst these two opponents Viviane Araujo, I think, is going to be a step behind in this fight, guys. Her age is definitely showing against Jennifer Maya. And in her past couple fights, she has been less dangerous on the feet and looking to get the fight to the ground more. Against Natalia Silva, she's going to look to get the fight to the ground. But Natalia Silva was able to defend a bunch of takedowns from Jasmine Jezuda Vicious. And we just saw... Jesuda Vicious put up 10 sevens against Priscilla Casueta. So if Silva could defend the takedowns from Jesuda Vicious, she could definitely defend the takedowns coming from Viviani Araujo, 37-year-old Viviani Araujo. So yeah, man, I'm going to have to go with the fresher fighter. They're pretty much spitting images. It's just that Natalia Silva is the younger one, the up-and-comer here give me natalia silva to win this one by decision and yeah her her streak continues next saturday night guys moving on 
we got Randy Brown taking on Muslim Salikov, another fighter whose age is starting to show. Muslim Salikov, 39 years old, coming into this fight. And he's been a step behind in his past couple of fights. I do think he's got a really low output. Um, but it's for a reason. It's The guy has a bunch of spinning attacks, man. Spinning head kicks, spinning liver shots. And he wastes a lot of energy trying to land these shots. Against a guy like Randy Brown, who's going to have the height and reach advantage, I don't see him landing those spinning shots unless Randy Brown is just a step behind with the cardio. But Randy Brown went to go train with Sean Brady and Joe Pfeiffer before this fight. I think he's doing all the right things. He's looking to move up in the weight class in terms of the rankings. And Salikov, like I said, 39 years old. His age is starting to show. I'm going to have to go with Randy Brown in this one. He's got the height and reach advantage. And if he if the fight stays standing, he should use that to his advantage and win this one by decision, guys. Moving on, we got the co-main event. Drew Dober taking on Renato Moicano. Renato Moicano making his return to the UFC, guys, after a long layoff. We didn't see him in 2023. Such a shame. He's a great fighter, guys. And... Always puts on a show. Taking on Drew Dober, who was able to get a win in his last one. And first round finish for Drew Dober against Ricky Glenn. However, I think Moicano also smokes Ricky Glenn. <laughs> Moicano is dangerous, guys. They're both great on the feet. But Moicano is going to have the advantage on the ground here. And I think that... Moicano's going to look to take this fight to the ground. He's got the clear advantage, and he doesn't play with his food. I think he's going to sub Drew Dober next Saturday, and Drew Dober's not going to know what's coming, man. I see Moicano having a great game plan next Saturday. He hasn't fought all year, and he's always looking to get a fantastic finish for the fans. Give me Moicano by submission. And moving on, guys, we got the main event. Imovov taking on Roman the Leeds, eh, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about these picks, man. The Leeds eh, is just a freaking brute force. Like, wins all his fights by just being the dominant, the hammer. Always being the hammer. And... Imovov, definitely the more technical fighter here with in terms of the stand-up. But he is way too comfortable at fighting in the clinch. Against Sean Strickland, Strickland was able to work up five minutes of control time in the clinch. And Strickland even got a takedown in that fight. Against Phil Hawes. Phil Hawes was able to work up a lot of control time. And Phil Hawes even got some takedowns in that fight. The leads a is is live to get some takedowns in this fight for sure and he is dangerous off his back he's dangerous on the ground anywhere it goes the leads eight, i think he's gonna have the physicality advantage here if he's on top i i just see him working up control time it could be a long night for imovov if he's on his back and if this fight is playing out in the clinch that's Delize's best chance to work his power. And he could take a punch too, man. So it's it's a tough fight here. Imovov going to have the technical advantage, but Delize going to have the brute force advantage. And I think that's what's going to get it done in this fight. I don't see it playing out five rounds. I see Delize being able to work up the just having the cardio advantage, having the ground and grappling strength advantage. He's going to take Imovov down and he's going to maybe he's live for a ground and pound finish here, guys. I I think that it's it's definitely possible. Imovov against Phil Hawes, he did not look good and Phil Hawes when the fight played outstanding, 
he was having some success, but once he noticed that Imovov's technique was getting to him, he did not want to stand with him anymore. And whenever he wanted to get him down, he got him down, guys. I know that fight was a long time ago, and Imovov definitely might have improved since, and his takedown percentage has shown it. But the Lidze, man, he is just relentless. And this is his first five-round fight. I know he's going to be prepared for it. Give me the Lidze to win this one by decision, guys. Or, like I said, he's live for a ground and pound finish. There you guys have it. My picks and predictions for UFC Vegas 85. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think, man. Peace.